our forces are under attack. Should you become a nuisance, I'll kill you myself. Hey there, StarCraft fans, it's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Circa Prude War Remastered. Today it's going to be Bisu and Jadong coming at you here on Fighting Spirit. It's a Patreon cast, top right, it's going to be Bisu, and in the top left, it's going to be Jadong. Two major legends, you guys know these guys. You don't need any introduction to know who these guys are, so go ahead and hit that like button. If you're excited for Bisu versus Jadong here, again, it's going to be a Patreon cast. Woof. So, PVZ from Jadong, man. For a while, I had basically no other matches from Jadong other than PVZ. And now we have some ZDTs from Jadong, if you're interested in checking them out. Got a Jadong versus Fantasy post that I posted. Let's see, it's a Patreon cast. So, like a month ago, if you're watching this, in like, I don't know, late August or early September 2024. <laughs> or if you are a patron of mine, thank you very, very much. I do appreciate you. And I posted it like two days ago on the channel. Jadong versus Fantasy Man. Two legends still going at it. Gateway opening here from Bisu. Does he scout the correct direction? No. Man, PVZ with Bisu. And a gate opening where he scouts the correct direction is like an 80% win rate for Bisu, I feel like. But nope, it's just going to be an overpool here from Jadong. Terror of the Overlord scouting out the correct direction. And Bisu says... All right, all right. No Zerg there. And... Wait a second. Why? Why did you turn back here? Ugh. Hmm... All right, so we will see if Bisu sees this Overlord. Man, gateways have so much sight range. <laughs> no, but not as much as Overlords. Not as much. No. Yeah, he did see that gateway, so he knows where Bisu is. And by process of elimination, Bisu knows where Chaedong is. And three sets of lings are coming up to combat this one Robert the Zealot. Yeah, so he knows it's not a hatch first, so turn around, turn around, run, run. Don't get surrounded in the open field by Zerglings, Mr. Robert the Zealot. Gas on the way here, no gas here from Bisu. And we will see how many sets of lings Jadong here is gonna make. Expanding. Bisu knows that this is an, an early gas. So speed is nowhere near completion and hasn't even started yet. So that's why he expanded here. If he saw early gas, then I think he would have just walled off. Maybe made a forge, maybe made a cannon and then expanded, but... Yeah, we can hold off slowlings. We can hold off slowlings with zealots and maybe pull in some probes if we need to. Metabolic boost with the first hundred gas instead of lair second hundred gas going to the lair. I feel like I haven't seen this for like several months. In PVZ, your first hundred gas goes to lair, but nope, nope indeed. Here for Jadong. Good stuff. And again, this is an RJB replay. Check him out. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. And yeah, this is a Patreon cast, man. Thanks for supporting me on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least $1 a month. I appreciate ya. Had a new patron today. Yosh, I think is how you say his name. I don't know if I can do that accurately, but I'm doing my best. So if you're watching this, the week of August the 10th, 2024, thank you for being a patron. I love ya. Feel the love from you too. And again, if you're watching this, I don't know, late August, early September 2024, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here six times a week with StarCraft Brood War content. So yeah, we're gonna do some link pressure, right? That's why you get Metabolic Boost first, is you want to get some link pressure out here and maybe get in for a scout. No, but see, it's the expansion, then the forge, then the cannon. But the order you do that in is pretty important. Oh, just missed a chance to get a surround on that Zealot. 
so annoying, dude, but just going for it. He ends up getting, I think, one kill. Nothing too crazy. Kind of like it. Just going for some speedlings, put some Fear of Zerg into Bisu here, and then go to Aspire. Third base on the way here. Maybe a little bit late, but that's okay. We can catch up with making three drones at a time from each hatch. Stargate on the way here. And is there going to be enough Scourge to handle the Corsairs, or do we need to throw down a Hydralisk Den? Uh, Jadong says, nope, no need for a Hydralisk Den. Just spire all the way here to protect. And oh, ho, ho, a double Stargate opening here. Whoa, a double Stargate plus one attack for those Corsairs. Good heavens to Betsy. Man, maybe you do want those Hydras. I'm not sure if Scourge is going to be enough here, ladies and gentlemen, but it is Jadong. We believe in him. Let's see what we get. Cannon to fall back to against the Scourge here at both of the bases. Very, very, very standard stuff. And on the other side, it is Muta's. All right, man. Jadong is not making Scourge. He doesn't know what this is. He doesn't understand this is double Stargate Mass Corsair. Oh, RJB. You send me this cast. You send me this replay because I was going to be very mad that Jadong is basically blindly going Muta's against what turns out to be a double Stargate plus one Corsair build. Hmm? So the Mutas say, we can handle one of you. That sounds great. In fact, we have some Scourge, too. So, we're gonna fight ya. But then there are cannons to fall back to, and the Mutas are like, oh, okay. Hold on. Ah, er, yep, three, cor okay, three Corsairs at this time. He's like, uh-oh, that's a Stargate. I bet if I came in here, you're gonna see another Stargate. Did you fall back? Oh, he fell back. All right, sneaky stuff, killing. Again, trying to kill just a couple probes here. Not really trying to kill the Corsairs with the Mutas as much. Trying to make sure the probe count here at the natural base is abysmal for Bisu. But guys at 31 probes still. 21 drones on the other side of things. And, uh, oh, it's a macro hatch. God, he's going to try to fight this without Hydras. I don't know how I feel about this, man. I really don't. But it is. It's going to be Lings. It's going to be Mutalisks. Oh, no, there is a Hydralisk Den. I'm so blind. Oh, it's right over here. I saw this coming in. Thought that was the den. This is the den. Okay, so I feel better about this. He's like, yo, this is a lot of Corsairs. They're probably getting upgrades. Let's go ahead, try to use these Mutalisks as much as we can. But then let's go into the Hydralisks and see what we can do that way. There's a Stipler Archives coming in for Archons and for Storm and all sorts of other beautiful stuff. And so far, so good. I am worried, though. This is going to be a big Corsair move out. And it is. And then, man, if you could target fire those Scourge down. It's a lot of Scourge. It's a lot of Scourge that J-Dog is investing into right now. But is it 28 drones, which is pretty good, considering how many Scourge and Mutalisk and Lings he's made so far. This is pretty good. Macro out of the Dong, indeed. Uh, oh, free Scourger free. Jadong did not want to set up there. Didn't quite have it ready to go. So he's like, oh, if the Corsairs are in the middle of the map, maybe I can harass somewhere else. No. No, you're... Oh, gosh. All right. Blindsided. Taking some hits there. Zealots. Do not have the speed upgrade yet, nor is it even really that far along. But we're moving out anyway. DT coming in. It's like a Corsair DT kind of a thing. Possibly. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're taking hits from Hydros, but guess what? All your overlords are dead. You are supply blocked into absolutely next week. 28 available supply out of 63 played. Okay. All right. That really hurts. He doesn't have the cash to get on supply blocked either. Yeah, these mutas need to keep themselves alive to snipe High Templar. I don't know what other value they're going to have today. No Scourge, no. And the DT swinging in. There is an Overlord at both the natural and the third base here. So the DT. It is. It's DT Corsair. We're just flying in. So we're going to kill your Overlords. But it's not working. Another Overlord pops just in the nick of time. Are you kidding me? I cannot believe that happened. Another Overlord dies, though. The supply block is so brutal. But, you know, we're dealing with the DT. Jadong knows. Jadong knows this much of a commitment to Corsairs indicates there are more than likely DTs coming out. 
So we gotta make sure we have overlord, multiple overlords per bases. Ow, ow, split, 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 dead. Hunt, hunt, no, escaped, escaped. That's right, you split up, you run. The splash damage is not hitting all of your friends at the same time. And maybe you can escape too. 12 drones coming in. Jadong's like, I need, need to catch up at economy here now that I have enough overlords finally to actually make stuff. The only saving grace I think here for Jadong is that Bisu doesn't have a third base yet. So this feels like something where Jadong is kind of weathering the storm. But guess what? Storm is almost done. Can you weather that storm, Jadong? Maybe. Maybe you can. But it is charge lots, speedy lots with plus one attack. It is High Templar with storms available with enough energy to throw down a storm here. So trying to bust this is going to be dicey. Uh, Jadong does not seem to be wanting to move out. But he's definitely scouting around, making sure there's not a third base being taken somewhere where he doesn't know. He's got overlords in positions to scout that. And I mean, these are very brave overlords because there are Corsairs out that want to kill you if they knew where you were. Here comes Bisu. He's up 121 to 83 total supply. Some lurkers would be good, but lurker aspect is just now getting started. Singularity charge is coming in here next. Macro hatches for Jadong are going to help a lot here in holding this. Man, everybody falling back. Seriously. Seriously falling back. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be all about Storm here. This isn't like all of the Hydralisks known to mankind or Zerg kind, but it's a pretty good number of them here. But th look at that Zealot count. Yeah, man. Okay, good snipe on the High Templar, but ow, 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 ow. And that's so many speed lots, dude. Where are my lurkers, he says. Where are my sunkens? Where is my plague? It's almost at the point where the, there are enough Zealots that you need plague to handle this. At least Adrenal for your Lings. This is a whole huge number of Zealots. This is where you throw down a building here, get some Sunkens up, get some Lurkers down. He's making six Lurks. Oh, I don't know if he has time for it, though. I don't know if he has the time for it, though. Mmm. Sarah's continuing to hunt around. Hydra shutting down this third base would be a massive win for Jadon. Like, disgustingly big. So they snipe down this cannon, but then a ooh, I guess who has a hundred zealots though. So we're good. Base fine. Another overlord gets killed. It's not a supply block on Jadong, but it is not good. 140 supply here. For Bisu. Expanding is probably not gonna happen in this position. Oh, zealots out on the open field here. Hydro Lurker pushing in. Yeah, nope, you're not getting a fourth base, and you're not escaping as a drone either. Is there any way this could possibly work for Jadong? He's down 149 to 111 supply. There we go. Fighting lurkers in the middle of the map. No detection for you guys. There you go. Hydro Lurk. Forcing the Zealots away. That's exactly what Hydro Lurk is intended to do. Pushing on this third base. Is this game going to come down to this? Is this going to be third base lives or dies? If it lives for Bisu, he's in a pretty good spot, man. There are cannons, there are speed lots, there are high Templar up there. I like no panic storm from Bisu. He's like, all right, I got three storms here. Wait, two storms here. Don't have the Kadaran amulet upgrade yet. Jadong busting into the natural base, eating some storms right to the face. Yes, that did rhyme. Uh, oh, drone gets sniped. Jadong cannot get this fourth base up, man. He's trying, but there are so many zealots. Man, maybe it'd be better if you sent your Hydras and your Lurkers down here to secure a fourth base rather than kind of sort of pushing on the third base, but not really, right? If that's the choice, that's the choice. But man, it's... And they're making a run for it. Run! Get out of here! Okay, all the zealots die, and Jadong is going to take a fourth base. Excellent. But Dragoons are out. They've got obs. They've got range. The hive... Ahem. The hive is just getting started here. Maybe 20% complete. And suddenly... Yeah, there is this time in the game where Dragoons are out. Zealots are out. High Templar are out. Protoss has everything they need. Zerg doesn't quite have Plague yet. Doesn't quite have Dark Swarm yet. 
and it can get really dicey. It got to snipe OBS with all of your heart here, but uh, 180 to 116 supply. The transition from Bisu into this absolutely insane Zealot Dragoon High Templar push. No plague. One OBS does go down. I think it got stormed. Okay, any sunkens? No. Just trying, trying to make a sunken here, but it's probably too late. The storms are coming in so hot and heavy here. It is absolutely problematic. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure looks like there's just way too much Protoss here, doesn't it? They got 1-1 one, one upgrades. The Hiders are at a solid 2-0, but there just aren't enough of them. And every time they come in any numbers, they get stormed. Natural base, macro hatch, dead. Trying to get additional carapace upgrades. Trying to make, make sets of lings. Adrenal would be really good, but we don't have that either. Uh, no. GG. Jadong taps out in game one of our sneaky twofer for the Patreon cast of the day. Wow. I mean, that... <laughs> That was a great game by Bisu. Goes for the two Stargate plus one Corsair opening. Supply blocks Jadong right into the ground in a very crucial point in time for the player. Yeah, the third base never really got hurt. But the fourth base never happened in time to make any difference here. Bisu delayed his third base long enough, but when it was ready to go, it was ready to go. There were High Templar, there were speed lots there. Lurker aspect was a little bit late here too. And Jadong was just never able to poke. He was never able to really threaten this or really threaten this. And to be fair, Bisu was never able to really threaten any of his bases until he had a 60 supply, 70 supply advantage. And then he pushed in. And then there was no Dark Swarm. And this tech, I mean, this is an incredibly difficult thing to deal with, which is why the Sunkins and the Lurkers need to exist here while you're waiting on your Hive to finish and waiting for your Dark Swarm and your Plague to show up. He just didn't have anything. No Sunkins at all. The Lurkers were there, but undefended by the Sunkins, and that's not going to work for you in the long run. So just delaying the Hive a little bit too much, that came back and kicked him in the butt. But getting Supply Block slowed him down so much, too. Man, it's tough. It's tough to deal with. 95,000 to 74,000 points here. Outproducing the Protoss, yeah, but getting out killed by a 3 to 1 ratio is brutal. Resources spend 30,000 to 26,000. And yeah, if you get outspent... Outspent by your Protoss opponent, and you are Zerg. I don't care who you are. You're probably dead. Yeah, yeah. So that's game one of our sneaky twofer. Let's go to game two. And maybe it's a sneaky threefer. Who knows? Who knows? And let's see what game two is going to be all about between these two legends. Game two, we're on Polypoid. Uh, top right, it is Jadong. Good heavens, go away. Thank you. And in the top left, it's going to be Bisu. So yeah, red versus yellow. Fun color combination here. Terror of the Overlord's counting out the correct direction here in game number one. We will see if Bisu goes gate and scouts the correct direction because Jadong will be in trouble that way. We already did talk about that. And yeah, I'm on Instagram. At uh, Instagram.com slash Falcon.Paladin, which is funny because <laughs> there's someone out there on Instagram who already has the account Instagram.com slash Falcon.Paladin. And he's just like some dude. I think he's a college student. He's just like posting about like food he's eating and parties he's going to and like just living a good life. And he's Falcon Paladin out there, which is hilarious. So I'm Falcon dot Paladin, if you want to check that out. On the Insta, I just post little previews, little clips from my Brood War casts, and sometimes StarCraft 2 casts out there too, but you can just scroll past those if you want. But yeah, it's a fun follow. I'm uh, posting something out there pretty much every gosh darn day because I have stuff to highlight every gosh darn day because I'm posting six times a week, guys. And if you count the StarCraft 2 stuff I'm doing, it's, uh, I, I mean, it's like 11, 12 casts a week. It's a lot is what it is. And guess who scouted the Zerg first? So, Gate? I think maybe he wants to see if it's a hatch first. It's not. It's definitely another overpool opening here from our guy Jadong. Once again, trying to split the difference between going for incredibly good eco and incredibly aggressive. So now the probe can go ahead and block the hatch for a little bit. I mean, for a long time, that pool is nowhere near done. So worker battles, worker fights, 2024. That's right, that's where we are. Looking good, and it is a forge because it's not a hatch, right? 
If it was a hatch, you definitely want to go gate here. But if it's a pool first, yeah, let's forge it. Let's expand. Let's get a cannon up and let's call it good. It's tight. It's risky. It's kind of cheating out a nexus here against someone who went for an overpool, but it's okay. It feels like it is. And I'm sure a lot of lower level players who play Protoss are like, hey, that's a pool first. I gotta get cannons up before I can possibly expand. And guess what? Bisu says you don't. Bisu says, nope. I'm gonna go ahead, get my expansion up. I'm gonna go forge and then expansion and then cannon and I'm gonna be just fine. Look, look how fine I am. Gas? Yeah, finally taking some gas here. Jadong. And uh, is he attacking his own gateway with a probe? Why? Accident? Gotta be. What the heck? Did you just move deeper in to kill this gateway? What are you doing? Bisu! Are you making some kind of a point? Double expanding to make up for the fact that this was delayed. Super annoying stuff. And based on the fact that there is, in fact, a nexus here. Dude, how do you... He just took 200, well, 150 hit points off of that gateway. What the heck, man? Very weird stuff. Okay, first 100 gas here from Jadong. Let's take a bet. I'm going to say this game lair. Ready, set, wait. We need some more minerals. Lair, there it is. Okay, so yes, it is going to be a lair with the first 100 gas in this game here on Polypoid. Run, probe, run. Scout the presence of that third hatch, though, please. Or, you know, not. Maybe he already did, though. Because the probe did come from down here. So maybe Bisu already knows about that third base. It seems entirely possible. Who's sending two... Oh, man. Two overlords across for scouting purposes. I mean... They're both going to die to Corsairs, but uh, you want the scouting information so bad. Let's see. Let's see if he sees the Stargate. Go, Terry. Get it. See the Stargate, Terry. I mean, it's not really a surprise, Terry, but it is here, Terry. And there it is. So he sees the timing on the Stargate. Says, mm -hmm, yes, Corsairs. Run! And by run, I mean walk. I was going to say power walk, but that's not what it is at all. Race walking. You guys watching the Olympics? Again, Patreon cast. So some of you are going to be watching this, I think, after the Olympics are done. But if you're a patron, the Olympics are happening right now. And there is race walking. Spire coming in. Which is a dumb event. There are a lot of dumb events at the Olympics. Let's tell the truth. It varies. Some people really like watching race walking, right? Some people think Olympic basketball is dumb and boring. I like Olympic basketball. So, yeah. Everyone has their own tastes, I believe, is the lesson today. All right. Well, Citadel of Dune faster today because there's not a second Stargate. And by today, I mean in game two. No plus one Corsair opening. We're just going for a pretty fast Templar Archives. 530 on that Templar Archives warp in. That is zippy. Does he feel like this is a Hydra bus? It's almost like he's going to storm fast because it feels like a Hydra bus is coming. But look at Jadong's macro hatches, man. They are beautiful. So many macro hatches already. Not something we see a lot of. Certain players do. Pretty much all of the good ones. Solki, who's won the last two ASLs, isn't like a crazy, crazy macro hatcher. But he definitely uses macro hatches. So if you want to win an ASL, make some macro hatches. It is plus one air weapons, though. Ah. So BC doesn't go fast plus one air weapons. He wants DTs first. And then he wants plus one ground weapons. And then he wants plus one air weapons. Okay. Interesting plays here. Hydroden coming in. As it is more mutas and a set of Scourge coming in here from Jadong. And I guess part of the problem for Jadong in game one, two was that the mutas didn't get anything done. <sighs> to be fair, to be fair, there's nothing defending these drones at this third base at all. They did probably kill some probes. It didn't probably. They did. How many probes there are, I don't know. So, hey, three zealots showed up. Now the mutas have to spend their time trying to whittle down the HP on a zealot, which takes a hot minute. Man, it 
take so many hits. Now the Corsairs are like, hold on. I was going to say, there are some free overlords here. And there were, but they pulled right on back. I guess because the Mutas wiped out the Zealots a little bit faster than Bisu anticipated. Yeah, again, hard today is a hard day for getting DTs to accomplish anything. I'm not sure that DTs in the last game killed a single unit. Overlord down, Corsair ball. And look, if you're giving them plus one attack, you want to get more overlords than just four here, right? So yeah, there's more in production. Zealot coming in, and yeah, defend your probes with, <laughs> with your plus one Corsairs. Good luck, Mutas. So that should be it for Mutalisks. Hider production is in full swing here. They're going for the speed upgrade. They're going for the attack upgrade. And the range upgrade. All the things Hiders need to be... A complete breakfast. Scourge, one connected there. The other one did not. Six Corsairs out. Almost got some Scourge connections there. That was close. Really close. And one of the Corsairs does get picked off fleeing thanks to the Mutalisks there. All right, all right. These Mutas have killed a Corsair. They're putting in some value here. And Psionic Storm on the way. So yeah, we just rushed Temple Archives for DTs. And I just want to say again, they haven't accomplished anything. No kills, no kills. I am fairly sure the DT in game number one got no kills either. That's probably more than one of those, right? Ah, uh, oh, Corsairs didn't want to fight this. I guess there are a couple Scourge in the mix. That's, ooh, that Scourge did get a connection off. And I think killed a Corsair, too. That was the sound of a Corsair dying. Wow. All right. So, hmm. On average, I'd say this whole play is doing a lot better than Mutas with Scourge do against plus one Corsair balls, killing at least two of them. So the Corsair ball not as big as it wants to be. And in fact, it's smaller than it was like 60 seconds ago. But an Overlord dies. Not an Overlord apocalypse like we saw in game one. Just enough to slow Jadong down to a certain extent. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like zero Scourge hits there. Problematically. Ooh, DT. Zero kills on him. Yeah, it's... No, Jadong's not going to leave you an opening for DTs to wander in and kill all of your stuff. I mean... <laughs> he did leave an opening for Zealots to come in and kill all your stuff earlier. So maybe I shouldn't say that. But still. Gotta be prepared. All right, so Hydra's push, speed lots with plus one attack say, oh, really? You're going to push on me like this? And Jadong says, yeah, yeah, actually I am. I have a lot of Hydra lists. How do you like these apples? And Bisu says, fall back, fall back, fall back into the natural. Storm is done. High Templar are present. Storms are available, but we'll see. When does it get dangerous here? Up. All right, Zealot's coming out. Push these guys back. Distract the Hydras from saving the Overlords. Maybe allowing DTs to save it? No! Overlord goes down to the Storm and the Corsair connections. Now DTs can come out here and cause some issues. And yeah, without the Overlords, that's it. Jadong says, I know. DTs are a major problem now. And of course, I don't know where any of those DTs happen to be. Here's one. Way out of position to really be of any use here, mind you. Mutas. Now, I was going to say, hard to kill zealots with mutas like this, but you know, with really great micro, you could pull it off. That's exactly what's happening here. So, fourth base coming in here from Jadong. And see, this is what Jadong can do when he's not supply blocked into the ground at minute eight. That is how different this is for him right now. Mutas trying to jump on anything they can find. There are no High Templar here for them to dive on. So they fall back. DT. Wow. Oh, DT gets a kill. DT accomplishes something because, really, you didn't bring any overlords to this party, Jadong? What the heck? They have, they have speed. There we go. 
so no no third base here. Uh, Bisu's army is really out of position all of a sudden, guys. What is happening right now? Okay, lurkers, lurkers. Yeah, pushing at the front. Fourth base established. Keeping Bisu contained on two bases is enough. But Bisu's like, screw that. I'm not contained. I'm out on the map. And I'm going to kill your third base. How do you like them apples? Well, there is like one sunken here. There is exactly one sunken. No lurkers here at all. We're going to have to gauge in the middle of the map right now. Bisu decides to head on back home for some reason. Ob snipe, ob snipe, ob snipe, ob snipe, ob snipe, ob snipe. Nope, did not snipe the obs. Lurkers are getting crushed out. Engagement in the middle of the map. Zealots win that left side. Dude, and this right side. This is crazy. Yeah, Hydra's fighting Zealots out in the open. Ugh, ugh. Out in the open field here. Not looking great, man. Dude, is Bisu going to win this thing despite not having a third base at all? There's the ob sniper. The lurker died anyway. Oh, right at the exact nick of time there, too. Storming lurker eggs is a pretty good use of storm. There was some kind of an attack up here with a shuttle that I totally missed. But Jadong seems fine at 48 workers. He's going hydro lurker all the live long day here. Mutas jumping on those high Templar. That's what they're here for. Hydra's trying to snipe them down as well. Storms are really good, though. Oh, Zerg is getting wiped out big time. Corsair is hunting overlords here at the third base. It is a supply block to Jadong now. I think all of the... I don't know if all of the Corsairs are going to die, but a whole bunch of them are going to go down here. More obs, because if those obs die, this gets a lot harder for the Dragoons. I don't know. The saving grace here for Jadong is that he's got a fourth base and Bisu is on two bases. So the contain, the contain is how this is going to work out for Jadong if it's going to work out for the Dong. Feels like it is. Feels like it is right now. Okay, one obs gets sniped. That's why you have backup obs, though. There's still an obs here. So Lurker Hydra can definitely work. Ooh, look at the obs dancing. No, the obs goes down. But only one Lurker survives at the front. How scraptastic is this? But Jadong being at 89 supply to 114. He got extra minerals coming in here too. Bisu's sending speed lots out, I'm guessing, to the third base. And there is the influx of Hydras coming in. Another OBS means the Lurker dies, but Mass Hydra can it do it. High Templar says, I don't have enough energy for a storm. Why am I out here? And gets obliterated, gets completely shut down. Bisu holding on his own. Ooh, Zealots come into this third base. This is an advantage for Jadong right now. If these drones die, that's kind of a huge deal. Man, so good, so good sending those out. This, I don't know why a probe came out here at all. I'm not sure what you're trying to do. There's way too much. There is way, way too much here. I mean, Zealots are trying to check this fourth base or fifth base, I guess, Jadong, but there isn't one there. I love that there's three obs now. The number of dead obs in this game is a lot. Lurker eggs trying to come up. Man, having an overlord here. These obs would be so dead, but Jadong not doing an incredible job bringing overlords to the front with him when they die. Uh, one, two upgrades versus two, one upgrades. Upgrades are even here for BC. That's not great for him, and no. You don't get a third base. I cannot believe he's not sending an overlord over. It doesn't matter. Bisu GG's out. And bam, that is a win for our guy Jadong in game number two. So that's what Jadong can do. That's what he's capable of doing is taking down Bisu in the modern game using hiders and lurkers. Good upgrades. Defending against the Corsair stuff, dodging storms as much as he can, macroing to within an inch of his life. 300 minerals and 100 gas left over. 
at this stage of the game is crazy good. Yeah, Beast Yudas was not never able to get a third base out. The Corsairs did not do as much supply blocking as I think he needed them to do. And then if you can win here before the Protoss starts getting things out like Reavers, or if you can deny the third base of the Protoss at all, you're going to be pretty golden with Hiders and Lurkers. But there is a time limit on it, right? Right. So GG there. Jadon gets the win. A lot of Hiders and Lurkers died for that victory, but that is how Zerg wins. They throw stuff at you losing thousands and millions of units and eventually you just overwhelm and then the enemy dies so at the end of the day what a fantastic fantastic showing there for both players bisu with a two gate corsair opening that just absolutely crippled daedong economically made it so hard for him to win that game and then this more of a standard one. Yes, it was plus one Corsairs, but only out of one Stargate. Jadong weathered that storm, got into Hiders, got good upgrades for them too. Got Lurker Aspect, dealt with the Zealots. Didn't have to invest too much in Sunken's back home, which is huge. If you can pull it off, man. If you can pull it off, you're a happy camper. Yeah, one Sunken here, one Sunken here. That's it. If you can be the aggressor and not be the defender and have to get rid of drones. Yeah. It's interesting. Interesting, interesting. So, GG there. Jadon gets the win. Bisu gets the other win. That is a sneaky two for, for you today. Haha. -ha. 117,000 points, 111,000 points there. Bisu, more points today because he killed so much stuff. Jadon outproducing, getting out killed again, but by similar numbers here. Two buildings raised to zero, and this is what the Zerg wants to see an outspend by 4,275 resources in 16 minutes. That is how you beat somebody like Bisu. Getting that third base up, getting that fourth base up, where Bisu can't establish a third to save his life, and you'll get the win. So, GG. And that right there is going to be it for me. So, this is Ben, a Falcon Paladin, coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brutal Remastered and a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.